Here's a soundbite that will probably cause you anxiety. And if it didn't, it's because you're not someone who is over the age of 18 who has ever held a job where you had to communicate with other people. At this point, it's almost like a known phenomenon that the Slack notification sound causes a hit of anxiety to people that have worked in the corporate life long enough. And the most interesting piece of irony is that it was originally supposed to do the exact opposite. That's right, the company that manufactured that sound that gives you a ton of anxiety on a Friday 4.59 p.m. when you're about to close your work laptop and you hear it and you realize you're gonna have to talk to someone else for at least another five minutes the company that made that sound was originally supposed to be the thing you use after the workday was done and it gets crazier than that this is the story of how slack went from a 50 million plus dollar funded video game to the thing that literally makes the fabric of corporate nightmares now if you're part of the younger audience you might see slack as the discord for the workplace but it's actually the other way around before discord existed there was slack and before slack existed there was a company called tiny spec in 2009 stuart butterfield ended up leaving his job at yahoo with three other people to found a game called Glitch. The whole idea about Glitch was that it would be an MMO that took place in a 2D world and instead of combat mechanics, it was sort of like Minecraft met RuneScape met MapleStory in the sense that you could just sort of build, interact with the world, train skills, and just have fun with other people and build the world around you. They managed to raise $1.5 million in angel funding in 2009, which given the economic status at the time, was definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do. And in 2011, a grand total of $10.7 million for a Series B. And this is kind of unheard of for a random company that came out of nowhere during an economic crisis that was supposed to make a 2D video game. But it's not as random as you might think. You see, Stuart actually founded a company a couple years prior, and that company made another video game called Never Ending. Never Ending was a super basic video game that started in 2002 and ended up closing down in 2004 due to lack of audience. But Stuart didn't want all the code that he had written for the game to go to waste, so he started thinking of ways to repurpose it. They took a look at all their source code and all the functionality they have built, and they came up with the idea for a live photo sharing app. And you may have heard of it, it's called Flickr. It eventually pivoted to just sharing photos online in general. And if you were someone who was born before like 1998, you probably remember seeing a bunch of images hosted on Flickr. It was sort of like the imager back in the day. And in an insane twist, they actually blew up. Stuart successfully repurposed his video game code to make a viral website that eventually got acquired by Yahoo in 2005. It's speculated that Yahoo purchased them from anywhere from like 20 to $30 million. And what happened to Flickr next, you could probably imagine. And just like Yahoo did with their own website and everything else they acquired, they just ran it into the ground with poor management. Now, Stuart and a couple other people ended up staying at Yahoo after the acquisition. And after four years of being on the Yahoo team, he felt like he was not being taken seriously, that nobody took his advice, and he decided to leave with a couple other people that were on the original team. And he still had a dream to build a video game, and that's when he started a company called Tiny Spec with the newest idea, a 2D game called Glitch. Now, like we talked about, Glitch raised a ton of money, and it sort of makes sense why. Stuart was someone who previously started a video game company, and while the video game itself wasn't successful, he still managed to turn it into something that later down the line would have made a nice return on investment for their investors. And if there's one thing investors love, it's people that have a proven track record, even if it's only one time. So he was able to raise a ton of funding for this video game that ended up actually just falling flat. In September of 2011, after two years of active development and almost $18 million in funding, Glitch launched for the first time and then they unlaunched right afterwards because there were a ton of bugs and they wanted to focus on improving the gameplay. After taking a couple weeks to improve things, they relaunched again and they were not seeing the type of engagement that they wanted. Sure, the people that were playing the game were enjoying it and they even had cool features like if you were new to the game, an actual employee or a veteran player that were assigned to be guides would log on and sort of teach you the ropes of the game. There was just not enough demand for the unique genre that the game found itself in. Realizing that a small 2D browser game could never sort of live up to the returns that a $17 million of funding warranted, Stuart decided to do what he did previously with Never Ending. 
he tried to look at the technology they had built for the game and repurpose it. And there were a lot of opportunities. He had an amazing internal team due to all the funding, and there was a ton of stuff they built, one of which was a chat system for the team to collaborate with each other. This was something that all of them realized they would never want to live without if they had to work at another company. It was just so convenient to chat and message each other whenever they needed to, and have different channels for different topics and priorities within the company. So they realized if they benefited so much from it, the rest of the world might benefit from it as well. But they decided to pivot and they officially ended up shutting down Glitch in 2012. And this is where things get kind of crazy. On August 14th, 2013, just a couple months after shutting down the Glitch game itself, they ended up launching Slack and it blew up. Within 24 hours, they got 8,000 customers signed on just that day. A couple months later, they reported they had 10,000 active new users signing up on the platform per day. And by 2015, they had 200,000 users paying for the service. And by the time 2018 rolled around, they had reported an insane $400 million in revenue taken in that year. It's also no surprise that they scaled up that quickly. From 2009 to 2018, they ended up raising a total of $841 million just in funding, which is absolutely insane. And the value of the company just kept running higher and higher and higher until 2020 when Salesforce announced they would be buying Slack for a reported $27 billion. And honestly, it's one of the most insane startup journeys I have seen. Stuart wanted to build two different gaming companies and both times he pivoted into different ideas on top of the same technology. Now, I don't know what that says for the gaming industry, but it's pretty impressive that he was able to salvage what he made and turn them into giant profits the way that he did. You can rest assured that if he ever tries to start another gaming company after Slack, it's probably going to get an insane amount of investing and funding, not because they think the game will be successful, but because whatever he makes afterwards will probably just skyrocket into oblivion. And at the current moment, Slack is kind of undefeated. The only alternative out there is what, like Teams? I worked at a company that used Teams once and it was like, I mean, just terrible. Now, I'm a big Discord fanboy, but Discord sort of marketed itself towards gaming enthusiasts and sort of communities of that sort, so I don't think it's going to be replacing Workplace Slack anytime soon, even though for my businesses, I use it instead of Slack. But I think the moral of the story here is that sometimes you build something and it has a lot of traction. One of the reasons Glitch was so important and popular amongst the few users that actually used it was because the chat system was like nothing else. It built an insane community within the players, so much so that players were willing to onboard newer players as guides so that they could just keep playing the game and have a community to interact with. And Stuart, seeing that that one feature had so much impact on a games community, realized that it could probably have the same amount of impact in a much more lucrative and just quite frankly bigger market such as B2B workplaces especially in 2011 when people were still using things like Slack to communicate and there were no really good tools for teams that were remote to work with each other or even teams that weren't remote to keep track of what they were sending each other. And that, my friends, is why every time I hear a Slack notification, even though a part of my soul feels like it's diminishing and I feel an immense sense of impending doom and I feel like I'm letting down Naval, Paul Graham and all the other entrepreneurs that came before us, I also in the back of my mind remember that key lesson that Stuart wanted us all to learn. Build a failing gaming company, take the technology and use it for something else. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.